Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We have the famous Jim Brown, the designer of the Windrider 17. We're going to go through all his thoughts here. On the <laughs> and uh, we're going to go over the design, the, how the origins of the Windrider 17. We're actually sitting in his Windrider 17 right now. It's the, the turtle. Box turtle. The box turtle. Yeah. This thing's it's, it's huge. You could have a party in here. But we're going to sit down. We're going to discuss the, the origins, the design, what was bad, what is good. And, hey uh, guys, my name's Ziggy, and I'm out boat camping the barrier islands of the Gulf of Mexico. So jump aboard, because I'm going to take you bastards sailing. That'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're wandering from subject here. We're going down to rudder problems is the, yeah. we're going to deal with. Yeah, and... Uh, Which kind of ties into what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. so. some, some, of, uh, some of the... Uh, uh, Windrider owners are going to know about rudder problems. Uh, uh, when a designer works with a manufacturer, uh, he has to become malleable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, all of the aluminum parts in the in the boat were intended to be anodized, and uh, it happened that some of them didn't get anodized in production okay. because the bean counters got in the, in the works. You know. Uh, anodizing is expensive, it causes a very toxic effluent, it's hard to get a license and all of that stuff, but uh, it makes aluminum uh, wonderfully resistant to corrosion. But sometimes some wind riders have the rotor tube, which is that tube about that long that's molded into the boat. Mm -hmm. It's really, we, the, t the truth is it should be called the rudder port, that would right. be the the sailor talk mm -hmm. way. It's molded into the boat. And then there's the rudder shaft, which comes up out of the rudder. It's actually molded into the rudder. And it comes up and it inserts from the bottom up through the rudder tube. And in between those two tubes, there's enough slack for a plastic tube that uh, forms a corrosion-proof bushing between the rudder shaft mm -hmm. and the rudder port. I'm just getting ready to re replace mine. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, that plastic tube um, uh, has to go into a lathe and get uh, uh, get trimmed down a bit in order to fit that space between the, that, that slack, that slot between the, the rudder shaft and the rudder port. Uh -huh. And, and uh, overproduction from time to time and from one owner of the company to another owner of the company without adequate communication uh, between the two owners as the assets get passed over. You know, some of those rudder tubes fit pretty, smu pretty smu snugly right. against their plastic bushing. Mm -hmm. And if the rudder shaft or the rudder port is not anodized and starts corroding, the aluminum starts corroding, and uh, corrosion is a very expansive process. It's hard to believe the pressure that corrosion can cause. It can make the parts get bigger mm -hmm. to the point where all of a sudden the corrosion between one side and or the other side of that plastic bushing is squeezing on the bushing so hard that you can't move the rudder. Okay, the yeah, rudder, yeah, yeah. The rudder gets locked in the boat. And it's, I'm telling you, man, it's dead nuts locked. We've had some of them where we've done everything we can to start rotating the rudder shaft mm -hmm. and enough to actually tear the shaft out of the rudder without being able to move it in the mm -hmm. boat. And so if, if that happens, uh, the, uh, a number of people have devised some pretty clever uh, ways of dealing with this problem. But uh, we have never been able to pass any kind of a saw blade down through the rudder port. Uh, no, actually, you'd, you'd have to <laughs> cut the rudder shaft itself yeah. off at the bottom of the boat. And then you can see down through that hole, and you've got three layers of tubing there. And if you could just get a saw in there, enough to cut one or two of those tubes mm -hmm. without cutting the rudder port tube. Right. Uh, you might be able to get the scraps and stuff out of there. But first, I gotta, I, I gotta back up and say that the rudder 
port, the part that's molded into the boat, has a little tab welded onto it. Here's the port and the tube itself, and here's the here's a little tab. It's only about two inches square that's welded onto the rudder port before it's molded into the boat. And so the polyethylene molding inside during the molding uh, process, it it encapsulates that little tab okay. that's welded on, and that's to keep the rudder port from falling out of the boat <laughs> and uh and and that thing is but it's molded in and so mm -hmm. you can't really rotate right and uh you can't slide up and down because that tab is molded in and if you try hard enough to rotate the, the rudder port or slide it up or down in there to get it out what that tab does is it tears up the plastic that's molded around uh. it. And now you got a leak. Because if a big guy, for instance, sits in the stern of the boat, the water line comes up beyond the level of that tab. Right. And it can soak up in around the rudder port and leak where you've damaged the mm -hmm. plastic that's molded around the tab. And so it has caused the toasting of some hulls. The company had to replace a couple of main wow. hulls okay. because trying to get the darn thing out just tore up that molding plastic around the rudder port that was in the boat. Now, the cleverest repair that I've seen is that if your rudder gets stuck in the boat, you know, and you can't get it out no matter mm -hmm. what you do, Here's the procedure. You cut the rudder off at the bottom of the boat. Cut the rudder right off, right through the rudder shaft. Get mm -hmm. rid of the rudder. You're going to have to get a new, yeah. a new rudder. <clears throat> and then if, uh, take the seat out of the boat so you can get back into the stern and uh, r reach back in there with a, a saber saw that has a brand new, good, sharp metal cutting blade okay. on the saber saw and cut the whole works off about two and a half inches up from the bottom of the boat and down from the deck of the boat. Cut that whole frozen part out of there. Yeah. He'll, have a, he'll have a piece in your hand that has three layers of tube, you know, the mm -hmm. rudder shaft, the plastic bushing, and the rudder tube, right. rudder, pu rudder port, rather. All of that'll be throwaway, huh? And now you can probably get what's left of the rudder tube and shaft out of the boat. You can put something down through the top on the edge of the piece that's stuck, maybe stuck at the bottom and drive on it and it'll come out. And you won't be doing any damage now. You can, you can get rid of the stuff that's still stuck in the boat. Okay. And it'll probably be only stuck at the bottom. All right. And if, if, if you can't get it out by tapping on it, you know, you can, now it's short enough so you can get under there with a little pistol grip uh, yeah. hacksaw and cut mm -hmm. a slot in it and get it out, you know, anyway. So now what you gotta do is get a new rudder port. It doesn't have to have a tab on it. Yeah. <laughs> a new rudder port, it's a specific tube size and wall thickness and it's easy to just take a piece into them machine shop and say, give me a little piece of this. Yeah. And you slide that down there through the boat and measure it. And you can mark it at the deck and mark it at the bottom and take it off and cut off both ends and be a little angle on the bottom and mm -hmm. stuff like that, you know. And, and now you can put that baby back in there and with nothing more than a couple of hose clamps, you can clamp that thing into the boat, put the hose clamp around that two and a half inches of plastic that you left sticking up yeah, yeah. inside and at the deck. Just a couple of hose clamps is all it takes. Well, that's, that sounds easier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. You now, you can bond that in, too, if you want to make sure that that thing is not going to leak. Yeah, or that little epoxy out. wouldn't hurt. Yeah. G-Flex. G-Flex, okay. G-Flex will stick to polyethylene. If the polyethylene is cleaned and roughed up a little bit, G-Flex is amazing stuff. Uh, or you can use 5200, that 3M mm -hmm. product called 5200. Yeah. That sticks pretty well to polyethylene, too. Um, but anyway, now you got a new rudder tube. <laughs> All you 
rudder port in your the boat. Board, yeah. And now all you got to do is go get another plastic sleeve mm -hmm. and a new shaft for the rudder. Right. And the same same machine shop could probably give a new give you a new shaft, and you got to figure out how to bond and, that. Actually, actually I the think rudder. they're still available too from Nickel Boatworks. Right. Yeah. You can get a rudder. Yeah. Yeah. You, you get a new rudder if you can. Yeah. A lot and of that stuff's getting sold out now. It's getting harder to find parts, so you have yeah. to be you have to be creative. Yeah. Well, if anybody has to make a new rudder, let me know, and I'll I'll tell you how. All right. There you go. So. Um, uh, if uh, if you've got the, uh, the 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 damage problem solved, um, and uh, if all you need is a new plastic bushing to go in there, mm -hmm. which would be hard to find without finding somebody with a lathe who can put a piece of plastic pipe in the lathe mm -hmm. and trim it down to the proper size, you know. Those are great. still available. Oh, great. Because yeah, I, I just bought okay. one. Well, great. If, if 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 they ever become unavailable... Yeah, or they, all that stuff's becoming unavailable because they're just selling yeah. out their stock. Well, you so. can tape, take good old uh, uh, duct tape, but Gorilla Tape is much better. Oh, gorilla is a great tape. And just put Gorilla Tape around the bottom of the shaft just before it comes out of the boat and around the top of the rudder shaft just before it sticks up out of the deck and... Put as many as turns as you need in order to make it okay. fit in there. Yeah. And it'll go and go and go without having that plastic sleeve in there. No, that's good. That's good. And uh, uh, the uh, uh, the thing is that if you put a little too much tape, you can always unwrap it one turn and cut it off and see if it fits. And mm -hmm. you want to leave it with a little bit of slop in it. You want to be able to grab the rudder down below and work it and feel a little bit of motion between the rudder and the boat. Okay. So that uh, there's a little room for corrosion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? it, was, it swelled in there again. Yeah, uh -huh. and hey, don't put any grease in there. Okay. Because I think, I'm not sure of this, but I think that some of the problems of the rudders getting frozen in the boat has been caused by putting grease on the rudder shaft and the grease causing the plastic uh, bushing part of it to, okay. to swell. Yeah, to break down. Yeah. Even a WD-40 is not good on plastic. A lot of, a lot of oh, yeah. lubrications aren't. Oh, well, that may be a bigger problem than a corrosion. I yeah. just don't know. I, 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 uh, I've only had to deal with, with one damaged boat. I managed mm -hmm. to catch mine in time. Yeah. And incidentally, this boat that we're sitting in, <laughs> Is uh, the original pre-production prototype Windrider 17. Ooh, it's uh, royalty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was the first boat out of the mold, and uh, uh, it's it had some things wrong with the molding, uh, but I've been living with them, and she's uh, uh, how old now? Let's see, 2000 and and two mm -hmm. is when the the 17 first came out. And she's been out in the sun continuously all that time. There's not a crack in her. She's been sailed. It looks brand new. Yeah. I, I have a 2002 and a 2016. I have two of them. And, oh. you know, the 2002, I think, almost looks newer than the yeah. 2016. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, it's amazing the way they've been holding up. Uh, and, and as any boat owner will tell you, that's the big drag mm -hmm. of owning a boat is they don't hold up. Uh, even the... Fiberglass ones. Are, oh yeah, they'll, they'll bake you know, out. Yeah, Come brittle. Yeah, and the uh, and the the cord boats when they were using balsa core mm -hmm. and uh, honeycomb core and stuff like that. The cores have caused a lot of problem uh, uh, in composite boat construction. Now they've got really good foam, really good foam. That that Airx stuff is made out of polypropylene. Okay. Uh, man, that's, that's wonderful. Then, uh, you know, as you do the big mono holes, you get just any kind of moisture gets down in that core and that fiberglass. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a nightmare. Yeah. Well, as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, Andy Zimmerman and I have, t have talked about doing a new wind rider um, in composite. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we'd love to do one because we've learned so much yeah. Uh, on this one, but uh, if we were to build it in composite, it'd it start today. It'd start out at you know thirty thousand oh, dollars. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. 
And so the folks that have the uh, the uh, the old 16s and 17s are uh, having a good time with them, and most people are hanging on to them. It's not easy to find them nowadays. So if you need one, if you want one, you know, start looking early. Yeah, there's usually like maybe one in the country for sale at any given time. But people drive like from Texas to North Carolina to pick mm -hmm. them up out of yeah. California. I know people that go out of California from, you know, Kansas or something. Yeah. People drive halfway across the country for, yeah. for a Windrider. Well, so uh, they, they actually they actually they hold value because of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so I know some of these people they've got to be selling it for about what they bought it for, really. Yeah, the early ones sold for ten thousand uh, for five thousand dollars. The first introduction price, the introductory price was, uh, you know, just yeah. under five grand. And if you're going to buy one used now, you're into sixty five hundred. Yeah, you know. <laughs> All right, it's the box turtle. It's got lots and lots of room in there. It's amazing the room in there. All built up on top of the first prototype Windrider made. This is this is the this is the baby. This is the boy where it all started right here. And, and that wraps up chapter two. Stay tuned for chapter three, which deals with the hull, cracking in the hulls, and uh, the manufacturing process, how it all began on the hulls. It's pretty interesting. I'll see you there. And thank you for subscribing because I'm going to take you bastard sailing.